Hi, my name's Damien Muir. I'm the Euromag Product Manager at Burmad Water Technologies. And today, we're gonna to talk about the MC608A powered converter. We're gonna talk about the main display and how we can read all the flow data at one glance and how we customize what we see. Secondly, we're gonna talk about the outputs and how they're configured. And thirdly, we're just gonna to touch on some troubleshooting. Okay, so first up, we're gonna have a look at the main display. Now this is the display you see when the meter is first powered up. And what Euromag have done is to show all the live important flow data on the one page. You do not need to scroll through multiple pages to get all this flow data. So as we can see here on the top line, we see the instantaneous flow rate. If there is an alarm that's active, an alarm status icon will appear that corresponds to the alarm that's active. Now it also shows the power status. So here it shows a picture of a power plug and it's showing it's externally powered. And then if it's battery power, it'll show the battery and the, how much life is left on that battery. The middle line there shows the percentage output. Now this is the percentage output of your four to 20 milliamps, also of your full scale flow rate. And the bottom line here shows by default the total flow in the forward direction. But it is customizable and we'll just show you all the different options that are available. Okay, so on the bottom of the display, we have four function keys. And we can see here above the third function key, it has T plus. Now that represents the total flow in the forward direction, which is the default setting. But this can be changed to the partial counter. And the difference between the total counter and the partial counter is the same as your odometer in your car and your trip in your car. This one can be reset to zero while your totalized one cannot be. This can be reset through the software or you can use an external contact or push button to reset that. Then we go through, we have a totalizer for the reverse direction. Obviously it's a bi-directional meter, so we can have the totalizer there. And then again, a resettable counter for the reverse direction. We have a net figure that will actually minus your forward flow, minus your, your reverse flow. And then we have our date and time and temperature of the board, which is quite important to monitor in case it gets too hot. So we can change the bottom line by simply pressing the menu button, which is the first button above, below the word menu. And this will enter us into the main menu section. From here, we navigate down to options, go view options, last row. And here you can see we can configure whatever we like for the last, for the bottom line. And so let's just make that the partial counter. In the positive, we press OK. And what this also does, other than just change the bottom line, which we could do by toggling it, is if you lose power and it comes back up, it will always default to whatever you've set in there. So secondly, we're going to talk about how we can actually change the engineering units of your flow rate and total flow. So when we supply the units, by default, we have it as litres a second as the flow rate and metres cubed or kilolitres as the total flow. But this can be easily changed, again, by going to the main menu. Under options again, we'll go to technical units. And here we can change the flow rate unit, the flow rate time base, and the counter unit. So we might make that, say, litres an hour. And as your counter, well, let's just make this uh, megalitres, say. Go the other way. There we go, megalitres. Press OK on that. When you simply go to back arrows, you can return back to your main menu. And there you go. The units have changed to whatever you like. it, And it'll always retain that memory. If you lose power and it comes back on, it'll always go back to what you've, what you've set it up for. So the only other parts really to to explain about the display, to become familiar with it, is the uh, top port here is your infrared port. So you can have an infrared communication cable going on the front of the glass. You don't need to remove the cover, it goes over the front of the glass, and you can use that software to extract the data logs. And lastly, down the bottom there, we have our LED status. Now the red LED showing that it's in active mode, it's powered up all the time and the blue LED showing the sample rate. So it see it's continuously sampling. Now, one before, we're just showing that the uh, top line here can show an alarm status. So what we'll do is we'll actually trip, or a trip an alarm just to be able to show what that looks like. So what I can do, probably the easiest one, is I'll disconnect the sensor 
from the converter. So the converter itself, the electronics is always doing a self-health monitoring of this flow tube of, of the sensor of the meter in general. So if we disconnect that there, as you can see, you'll have an alarm pop up there with a uh, little square wave and it'll have an ERR message that'll appear above the second button. And if you press that button there, a pop-up window appears and it tells you exactly what the alarm is. If you have multiple alarms, it will list the multiple alarms there. Now, you press the ERR, clear that, and because it's still active, the alarm will trip up again. Now, what we'll do is we'll clear that alarm, we'll reconnect our sensor, and so what you can see here is the alarm icon has disappeared because the alarm is no longer active. However, you can see that it's still showing the ERR message. So if you come back to the meter and there's not an active alarm at that particular point, you can still see there was an alarm at some stage. So from here, we press that ERR button, we can see, hey, there was an alarm that was active. That's strange. So we can pull out the dialogues and actually see exactly when that alarm occurred and for how long. So it's great for troubleshooting. So what we've got here now is we've got the battery pack connected internally. So we've still got the IP68 protection of the housing itself. Now what we'll do is we'll just disconnect the power now. Now obviously the, the meter itself is, has got a capacitor in there that will keep the power active, but uh, eventually what will happen is it will lose enough power. It's come up with a low power active alarm there. And eventually when it doesn't have enough power to the meter, it kicks over to a battery power. And then we can see there, ERR, it's telling us that it has been a fault. So we uh, punch that up there and it tells us we had a low voltage, we had a power outage. It will run on battery power for as long as needed until power is restored. And it will still continue to data log, it will still continue to monitor the flow and, and, and totalise the flow. So now we're running in battery mode. When power is restored, I'll just put the power back on and that will just take a moment to kick over. And then as soon as it sees there's enough power there to power up the meter, it goes from battery mode to powered mode. Okay, so I think we've done a thorough run through of the, of the main display and how we can customise it and what the different icons uh, represent. And so next we're going to talk about the outputs of the MC608 and how they're configured.